Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video on the channel. I wanted to post this on my main channel tonight because I feel like this is more of a video that I want a lot of my core viewers to watch. Um, and the video is going to be about how to improve in foot champs basically without playing like a bitch. Because um, I know a lot of you guys want to do better in foot champs, but you don't want to play a certain style, which is totally understandable. And I think I'm one to say that I don't like playing in a certain style. Uh, and these styles, guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about, and it's, you guys can use whatever formation you want. Um, it would be a lower depth, uh, you know, 4-2-3-1 uh, general meta formation with comeback on a lot of players. And yes, if you learn how to use that formation, you will have a lot more close games, probably. And through the roll of a dice, it's very possible that you could get more wins and foot champs. But this video tonight is going to focus a little bit more about foot champions um, and just kind of how to get more wins playing the right way. Tips that I have. Um, and things that you can do to improve. I don't have any fancy technology or goals to show you guys. It's really more going to be a little bit of a discussion video. There's a couple main points that I have written on my notes that I'm going to share with you guys in, things of, in terms of how I feel like I became a lot better of a player because I used to be an Elite 3, Elite 2 player on FIFA um, in 17 and then in 18 and 19 and 20. Uh, I had top 100 finishes in all three of those years. Um, and this year, we've been using kind of like non-full meta teams and we've been getting 23 and 3 23 and 4 so i've really yet to splurge and go all out with a team yet so i feel like i have some good tips and things that i learned to do that made me a lot better on this game um the number one tip that i have for you guys figure out a formation that works for you and then start to understand what can i do in this formation to limit my counter attacks and to increase my attacks that's and i know that sounds so simple but let me give you guys an example right Four one two and 2 is one of my best formations on fifa it has been since 17 the way it plays in a narrow the quick tiki taka passes within the midfielders this formation really works for me but an instruction that i used to use on 19 was get in behind on my strikers i don't like doing that anymore on this game um because i feel like sometimes your striker will drift away too much and i just don't like it so i had to change those tactics because this worked for me but I think figuring out certain formations that really work for you, the only way you're going to be able to figure this out, guys, is trying formations. Um, a couple of pretty non-ratty formations that I would recommend to you guys. 4 triple 2 I've played that before. It's very good. My good friend Boris Legend plays it on Weekend League. He really likes it. 4 one 2 and 2 4 4 2 3 5 2 and 3 one 4 2 um, all five of these formations are very good formations to test out. Maybe you guys go give those some of those formations that I just named a go. Uh, in you know, don't do it in foot champs, but do it in rivals. Do it in friendlies. Do it in a mode where you can kind of build some confidence. And then I think that would lead me to my next point, which is understanding mentally where your players are on the pitch when you are playing. So, for example, I like to play a very high depth. I like to play between six and nine usually when I'm playing FIFA. What this means is that a lot of the time when I am attacking, I have to survey the pitch a little bit and start to realize, am I committing too many attackers forward? Am I committing too many attackers back? If I'm committing too many attackers forward, usually the best place to lose the ball is when you're putting pressure upon the opponent or you're at the corner flag sideline. You don't want to lose the ball with your center mids. And I do this all the time on Weekend League and I rage, especially this year, because I think counterattacks are so, so important this year. Um... Don't lose the ball in a scenario where you're going to be in a 2v3 or a 3v3. Um, and I think that's a big tip. Next tip, okay? This has to do with tactics, but being your own manager. This year, in my opinion, is the most tactical FIFA we've ever had ever. Um, and I, I really suggest that when you guys are playing a game and if your formation is not clicking, if you're seeing that your opponent is dominating you, but he doesn't look a lot better than you, go to the menu go to the squad screen after you click pause in that foot champs game and see what your opponent is playing understand what they're playing for example if my opponent's playing a 4-2-3-1 and i'm playing a 4-1-2-2 narrow yeah he's probably stretching the game wide i've only got narrow players and if i don't have the proper tactics i'm gonna get killed on the sidelines so then i would probably switch to something like a 4-4-2 or even a 4-2-3-1 to match them sometimes when you guys are playing somebody who's really ratty or really really sweaty the best thing you can do is try to actually match their formation or similar, right? I don't like the 4-2-3-1. I think it's a little too boring for my style of player, at least the way I would would like to log on and play FIFA for myself. 
So a lot of the time I see somebody play a 4-2-3-1, I switch to 4-4-2 or 4 triple 2 This is a big deal, and I think this is also a big deal. Possession players are at an all-time high in FIFA Ultimate Team. All-time high, especially in foot champs. People like to hold the ball, and the way you guys can stop this, man, find a great pressing formation. For me, 4-4-2 is the one that works really well for me. I put on like 7 or 8 depth, and I put on constant pressure. If somebody's holding the damn ball against me, with these tactics, you're not gonna, they're not gonna be able to hold the ball anymore. I'll tell you guys right now, with these specific tactics, your opponent's not holding the ball against you anymore. It's just, it's not gonna happen. Um, there's no way they will be able to anymore. So that's something that I really learned that really helped me. Um, you know, I, I think with adjusting to people that were holding holding the ball a ton. I think another really big deal in foot champs is don't play too many games in one sitting. Um, play when you're hot though. You know, and I think that's a big deal. If you guys log on one day on foot champs and you think you're playing really good, keep playing. Uh, keep, keep playing. Don't play five games and say, oh, I'm 5-0 and for the day. I'm going to stop. I'm going to get eload or play too many good players. No. Play, play. If you, It doesn't matter. If you're playing good players and you are on your game on that given day, I really suggest keep playing the game. That's what I do. I used to do that last year. I used to do these power sessions where if I was playing well, I would not stop playing the game because I knew it was good for me. I think another thing is, is is really important with this game and last year's game as well is really understanding what a player can give you and what where to maximize his position, right? Let's take a look at Wilfried Zaha, right? I got this guy red last week. Where would this guy give me the most usage, most likely in a team? Well, he's medium, medium, which is not the best for attacking creativity runs. He's also got a three-star weak foot. So generally, you would look at this type of card to be best in a wide position. Why would he still be good there? He possesses high physicals, high pace, high agility, and he also has five-star skills, which is really nice for space creation. This guy is most suited to the wide spot because you don't necessarily need to count on him for scoring goals, but he can create the space for you. He can get in behind and then produce that final pass or final, you know, little bit of execution to get you the goal to your main player. That's a really big deal, man. And I think player traits are very important this year, man. Definitely take a look at your players and see what they offer you, you know, as a trade. There are some really, really useful traits uh, in this year's FIFA. For example, Anderson Tuliska has finesse shot trait. This card is crazy with finesse shots because he has this trait. He's also got insane long shots. If you guys were to see my player review uh, on Anderson Tuliska, you know, I, I think you could see that, that the traits really made a difference with that type of card. Um, I think the biggest thing with foot champs as well and, and how to really increase your win tally slash your success don't stress yourself out, man. There's no point in stressing yourself out, guys, playing the weekend league slash foot champs. You shouldn't be stressed. If you guys are logging on one day and you're feeling super stressed, don't play the game. Uh, you know, play the game when you're feeling regen, just in the zen mood that, you know what, if there's some BS happening. And that's really my last point. And that's the thing for me that I felt like I grew the most as a FIFA player. I guess there would be this would be one of two. One, I just stopped letting the game get to me as much. Every weekend that I've done very well was not a weekend where I was raging. It was a weekend where I was just like, you know what? There's going to be BS happening, and I'm going to be okay with that. And that's kind of the way I used, I did it, and that's how I improved the most, man. I just was was okay with the BS that was happening, and I would move on, guys, and just deal with it. And that's kind of my biggest advice for you is that that would be the, the mental strength to have is a really big deal. And then I think the last thing is that um, manual defending is really important, guys. I think manual defending is very important. I know the AI and blocks are still very good in FIFA 21, and they're actually a problem, but I think putting your players in positions to manual defend and learning how to jockey is a really big deal. And I think the only way you guys can really get better at that is generally just manual defending. Trying not to commit too much to skill moves. Trying to almost understand where you feel like your opponent is going to go. And then I think attacking-wise, Left stick dribbling is my biggest advice to get better on FIFA 20, on FIFA 21. These two games, even 19 a little bit, but 20 and 21 were so reliant on heavy left stick dribbling. A lot of times I have people in my streams and in my videos saying, Nick, are you doing anything specific, you know, to, to score these crazy goals or to do these crazy things? And my answer to that is no. It's literally just left stick dribbling. I'm just learning how to utilize my left stick in scenarios um, to score goals. And I think that's the biggest thing. I think learning a skill move or two or a combo is really important. I think that can set you up for a lot of goals. But I think, moreover, I think really learning the, the left stick patterns of a player, right? And seeing players with high agility or even not high agility, but just learning how to get yourself into an angle that can be a high percentage slash effective shot. So guys, that's my video today. I wanted to give you guys my thoughts, man. I mean, I think a lot of you guys are 
maybe looking to get to gold too fast or elite three but this would be my best tips that i could give you guys really on how to do better in champs without playing like an absolute rat or playing too slow or playing or you know really boring yourself out so thank you guys so much for watching the video today i appreciate it and i'll see you guys later peace